Hello friends, my name is Cindy and I am one of the children's librarians at Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine. And today we're going to do our second reading of Piper Green and the Fairy Tree in Too Much Good Luck by Ellen Porter Potter and illustrated by Kim Lang. Chapter five, Bad Luck Camilla. Someone stole Nacho, Garth shouted. We all got into another ruckus over this news. Ms. Arabella clapped her hands together. No one stole Nacho, Ms. O'Malley said. I mean, Ms. Arabella said. And here is a picture of Nacho missing from his cage. Um, Ali O'Malley gasped and put her hand on her chest. Oh no, did he meet an untimely end? What does that mean, Nicole asked. She means, did Nacho die, said Ruby. There was a brand new ruckus over that one, but Ms. Arabella said, now, if you'd all simmer down, I'll explain about Nacho and tell you the good news. We tried to simmer down. The good news is that we are going to have a new student in our class, Ms. Arabella smiled at us. Her name is Camilla, and tomorrow will be her first day. What does that have to do with Nacho, I asked. Ms. Arabella paused. Then she said, Camilla is allergic to rabbits. Our gym teacher, Ms. Mrs. Hanover, is going to take Nacho home to live with her. We all wailed. No fair. He was the best class pet in the whole entire school. He'll be so sad without us. When Camilla arrives, Ms. Arabella interrupted us in a loud voice. I expect all of you to give her a warm welcome. We will, Ms. Arabella, said Jacob. He is secretly in love with Ms. Arabella, which is ridiculous because I'm going to marry Jacob when we grow up. I've told him that a million times. First no Nacho, and now we were supposed to be nice to the girl who made us get rid of Nacho? I stood up and banged my fist on my desk. A person who is allergic to rabbits has no business going to school, I declared. Sit down now, Piper, said Ms. Arabella. I sat back down in my chair and humphed. I guessed... Jacob's father was right after all. Four lucky things does equal bad luck, and the bad luck's name was Camilla. Chapter 6. The Opposite of a Binky. The first thing I did when I got home was to run to my bedroom. It was the lime greeniest thing I had ever seen in my life. The walls were lime green, the ceiling was lime green, my furniture was lime green. Mom had even painted my bed's headboard lime green. I gasped because I suddenly realized something horrible. Lime green is the color of the Wicked Witch's face from the Wizard of Oz. And then I realized something else even more horrible. I was going to have to sleep in a room painted like a Wicked Witch face. I went to the kitchen where Mom was scrubbing a paint roller in the sink. Guess what, I said. I've decided that lime green might not be my favorite color after all. Mom turned around and looked at me. Her eyebrows were lifted way up on her forehead. There were splatters of lime green paint on her t-shirt and her jeans. There were even lime green splatters in her hair. Excuse me, she said in her scary voice. Nothing, I didn't say anything, I told her. That's what I thought, she answered. Then she went back to scrubbing the paint roller. The door opened and dad walked in. He took off the big black rubber boots that he wears on his lobster boat. Then he put his lunch cooler and his coffee thermos on the kitchen table. He kissed mom on her lime green head, then me, then Leo. He smelled kind of fishy, but I didn't really mind. How did it go today? Mom asked. The weather was snotty, dad said, shaking his head. The boat was pitching like crazy. What was my catch? Leo asked. Dad always puts lobster traps into the water for me and Leo. When he comes home, he tells us what our traps caught. We get 10 cents for every lobster. Let's see, Leo, you had five lobsters. Dad reached into the change jar on the kitchen counter and dropped 50 cents in Leo's hands. Yes, Leo said, 20 more lobsters and I'll be able to get a jumbo pack of post-its. Leo is sort of a weirdo. What about me, I asked dad, what did I catch? Dad curled his lips down into a frowny face. Sorry, kiddo. Not even one lobster, I said. Well, there was one. I stuck out my hand for 10 cents, but it was too small, so we threw it back, Dad finished. That's the way it goes sometimes, pal. Tell it to the judge, I grumbled. 
Excuse me, Dad said. I said peanut butter fudge, I told him, because my dad does not always have the best sense of humor. I really needed some happy news, so I went outside to check if the fairy tree had left anything for me. Coming up the road was Mrs. Pennypocket and her bull terrier, Nigel. Afternoon, Piper, said Mrs. Pennypocket. Nigel sat down right away and began biting on his tail. I was just on my way to see your mother. I want her to have a look at Nigel. He's got a rash on his tail and it's driving him bananas. Mom is a nurse, but since we don't have a vet on the island, everyone takes their animals to her too. What are you doing? Mrs. Pennypocket asked. I'm checking to see if the fairies left a treasure for me, I told her. Well, I guess Nigel and I will just have to wait and see too, said Mrs. Pennypocket. I climbed up into the fairy tree. When I reached where the hole was, I touched, I mean, I stuck my hand inside and felt around. My fingers touched something small and smooth. <gasps> hey, Mrs. Pennypocket, I yelled out. Guess what? There is something. Go on, let's have a look at it, Mrs. Pennypocket said in an excited voice. Even Nigel seemed excited. He stopped biting his tail and was staring up at me. I scooped up the thing and took it out of the fairy hole. Ooh, I said. It was a beautiful dangly earring made of blue and green pieces of sea glass. I held it out for Mrs. Pennypocket to see. Well, now that's wicked glamorous, said Mrs. Pennypocket. Plus, it's even a clip-on. I clipped it on my ear and wiggled my head around. The little pieces of glass click-clacked against each other. Here's a picture of it. Hold on, I said. I'll get the other one so you can really see how they look on me. I reached back in the fairy hole. My hand padded around in there, and then it padded deeper into the hole, and then it padded all over the place. There's nothing else in there, I said in a shocked voice. Maybe the other earring fell out, said Mrs. Pennypocket. <clears throat> I climbed down the tree. Mrs. Pennypocket, Nigel, and I all looked around on the ground for another earring. Nope. I've been having rotten luck all over over the place, I grumbled. Well, said Mrs. Pennypocket, my gran told me that the fairy tree always leaves you something that you really need, even if you don't know you need it. Yeah, well, no offense to your grandma, I said, but maybe she didn't know what she was talking about, because what am I going to do with one earring? I slumped right down in the grass and put my head in my hands. I wondered what the opposite of a binky was, because that's, I, bleh, because that's what I felt like doing right now. Chapter 7. Wicked Witch Room. The next morning, I was totally exhausted. That's because I was awake for most of the night, being terrified of my wicked witch room. Every time mom or dad popped their heads in, I was looking right back at them. Go to sleep already, Piper, Dad said. The problem, I told him, is that Glunky and Jibs are nervous because they've never slept in a lime green room before. So how about tonight we all sleep in your room? He wasn't crazy about that idea. Apparently, the tooth fairy was also afraid of my room because in the morning my tooth was still under my pillow and there was no ka -ching. And worse, guess what today was? Camilla Day. After breakfast, I clipped on my one dangly sea glass earring, just in case Mrs. Pennypocket's grandma knew what she was talking about. Where did you get that earring from? Mom asked. I found it in the yard, I said, which was sort of true. Okay, well, remember, Piper, today is Camilla's first day at school. It's scary to be the new kid, so do your best to be nice to her. Yuppers, I said. I smiled at Mom. She stared at me. I saluted her. Why do I suddenly feel worried, she asked. When we got to the Maddie Rose, Camilla was already in the wheelhouse. She had long red hair. She didn't look scared at all. She was eating one of Mrs. Grindle's corn muffins and she was talking to all the kids. I grabbed a muffin real quick and went out on deck. So listen, I said to Jacob, when does all this bad luck go away? Because I'm about at the end of my rope. He shrugged, my dad never said. By the way, do you know that you're wearing only one earring? So what, I told him, pirates do it all the time. Just then, who do you think walks right up to us? Camilla. Mrs. Mr. Grindle said I might get seasick since I've never been on a boat this small. He thought I might feel better if I stood out on the deck. I don't think I'll get seasick though, because the weird thing about me is that I hardly ever vomit. Seriously, I think I've only vomited like twice in my whole life. I get hiccups all the time though. Once I hiccup for five hours straight. 
boy, this kid sure was chatty. We moved into the lighthouse keeper's cottage. Camilla continued, my dad is a carpenter, so they hired him to fix up the lighthouse. He's a really good carpenter, which means he does not sell carpets, by the way. My bedroom is in the attic and it's really tiny. I used to have a ginormous bedroom back in New Jersey. It was painted light blue. Light blue, suddenly that seemed like the best color to paint a room because there were so many nice things that were light blue, like the ocean and robin's eggs and blue raspberry ice pops. If you thought about it, lime green was the worst color because the only things that were lime green were Wicked Witches and St. Patrick's Day milk, which might just be leprechaun pee. Right then, I had another brainchild. I knew exactly how to bring Nacho back to our classroom. Hey, Camilla, I said, I have something important to tell you. I slid my eyeballs over to Jacob. He looked suspicious. I gave him a mind your own beeswax squint. And here she is about to tell Camilla. What is it? Camilla asked excitedly. It's about our teacher, Ms. Arabella, I told her. I put my head close to Camilla's and said quietly, Ms. Arabella is a witch. Camilla wrinkled up her nose. That's not true. She's a wicked witch, I said. She has a giant tote bag where she keeps all her witch stuff. It's full of evil potions and wart juice. If Ms. Arabella doesn't like you, she will put a spell on you and turn you into a hard boiled egg and eat you for lunch. And guess what kind of kid she likes the worst? Redheaded kids. Camilla frowned when she heard that. I felt a little bad about lying, but then I thought about Nacho. I bet he missed us. There were no kids in his new home to rub his head or to give him toilet paper rolls to chew on. He probably didn't feel like doing binkies either. If I were you, I said, I'd tell Mr. Grindle that you want to go right back home once, you get to Mink, once we get to Mink Island. Then I remembered what mom told me about being nice to Camilla on her first day. So I gave her a friendly pat on the back. Chapter eight. The giant tote bag. Everyone at school was excited to meet Camilla. They came running up to her on the playground before school started. They treated her like a movie star just because she was new and because we only have 50 kids in our whole school. Ruby even gave her one of the lobster band rings. It said, I heart soccer. How about Harding Nacho, I muttered. How about that? When we got to our classroom, Ms. Arabella had already written, Welcome to our class, Camilla, on the blackboard in big, swirly letters. Then she sat Camilla in the special chair right by her desk. Good morning, everyone, said Ms. Arabella, smiling. Let's all say hello to our new classmate, Camilla. Everyone screamed at the top of their lungs. Hello, Camilla, except for me. I just made my mouth move. Garth belched it. His breath smelled like Cheerios. Sorry about that, Camilla, said Ms. Arabella. We are an exceptionally noisy class. That's okay, said Camilla happily, because I have a cousin who never, ever, ever stops talking. She tells the same joke over and over again. What is brown and sticky? A stick. Then she laughs and laughs. Then she tells it all over again. What is brown and... I think you'll fit in just fine, Ms. Arabella interrupted Camilla. Then she turned to us and said, Camilla's family moved here from the state of New Jersey. So in honor of Camilla, we will be learning about interesting people who have lived in New Jersey. Ms. Arabella put her giant tote bag on her desk. Camilla gave it a funny look. Ms. Arabella reached in her tote bag and felt around. Then she lifted out a paper bag and put it on her desk. Out of the paper bag, she pulled a hard boiled egg. Oops, wrong bag, said Mrs. Ms. Arabella. That's my lunch. Camilla's eyes grew wide. Ms. Arabella reached back in her tote bag and pulled out another paper bag. This one held a light bulb in it. She held it up. Does anyone know who invented the light bulb, she asked us. Hunter raised his hand. He always raises his hand, even though he never knows the answer. He just guesses anything that comes into his head. Camilla's father, he said. No, Hunter, it was Thomas Edison, said Ms. Arabella, and he lived in New Jersey. Ms. Arabella reached back into her tote bag. This time she pulled out a box covered in tin foil. She put it on her head. It had a hole cut out of it so that you could see her face. She looked around us. Who would wear a helmet like this? Hunter raised his hand. Ms. Arabella looked around the class to see if anyone else had their hand up. No one did, so she had to call on him again. Hunter, said Ms. Arabella. My Uncle Phil used to wear a helmet like that. My mom says he's better now that he's on medication. Ms. Arabella sighed. You could hear the sigh in everything. 
I think we exasperate her. It's an astronaut's helmet class, she said, taking the box off her head. Oh, we said. Astronaut Buzz Aldrin was the second person to walk on the moon, Ms. Arabella told us, and guess where he was born? New Jersey, we all shouted happily, because we actually knew the answer to the question. Ms. Arabella reached into her tote bag. This time she pulled out a magic wand. Camilla's eyes got very big. What about this, she said. Swish, swish, Camilla made a squeaky sound. Everyone knows what this is, right? Ms. Arabella said. Swish, swish, who would use one of these things, she asked. A wicked witch, shrieked Camilla. She jumped out of her chair and ran like crazy out the door. And there's the picture. And that is the end of our second reading of Piper Green and the Fairy Tree, Too Much Good Luck by Ellen Potter and illustrated by Kim Lang. And tomorrow we will read our final part of the book, and I hope that you enjoyed it. My name is Cindy. I am one of the children's librarians at Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine. And I hope that you'll come back tomorrow for the finale of the book. Bye-bye, friends.